Hey everybody, it's Mark Ling here, and I've got with me an amazing guest. Her name is Rachel Raffay, and she is absolutely a superstar when it comes to when it comes to print on demand and selling lots and lots. I talk, I'm talking thousands of products, products that could range from anything from um, coasters that are carved out little coasters on, on wood or um, we're talking about like sports mugs like silver sports mugs that have prints on them and stuff and 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 making an absolute killing doing this and when you think hey I've heard of this before I don't think you've heard of it done the way Rachel does it and also to the level of success Rachel has done it and also she has helped so many thousands of other people achieve massive success with this model as well so without further ado, I want to welcome aboard Rachel, and we're going to grill her and try and get some of her best secrets to her success so that you can have that success also. Welcome along, Rachel. Thank you. Thank you for all those nice things too that you said. It's great to have you here. And I was wondering, first of all, just before we, we talk about like what your sources of traffic are and how you, how you go about what you do. Um, would you mind just quickly explaining like how you even got into this in the first place? Like what made you decide I'm just going to decide to put up a lot of products on the internet and start making all of these, um, these sales from all these mini income streams. Sure. Yeah. So I've been an entrepreneur. Like I've, I've loved trying different business models and things, but um, I remember actually before I tried this, I was doing some stuff online and I just hated it. I would tell my boyfriend at the time, I feel like a mechanical drone, a mechanical drone is so miserable. And um, around the same time was when a lot of people were talking about selling on Amazon, like selling regular products. And um, I had tried all kinds of random things at Easter cookie cutters and various. And um, that same boyfriend, he had a Pitbull fan page for the dogs, Pitbulls. And he had a mug and I was like, huh, I, I'm going to throw that up on Amazon and see what happens. And it started making a few hundred dollars a month, like from the very first mug. So I was like, let me see if I can try another one, try another one. And they just kept on adding more and more and more. So I just kept putting like each one, many of them would do well. So I'd add more, not all of them, but enough that it was really worth my time, especially given how easy it was. Wow. So you, you managed to uh, get some early success going um, like straight away. I guess that... I guess that that's really, really helpful because I know for me, when I'd made my third sale online, and we're talking a long time ago, this is way back in 1999, and this was as an affiliate. Um, but when I'd made my third sale, I knew this is this is not just an accident. This is repeatable. Different people from different locations are buying something. Therefore, I, I'm just going to just stay up all night and just work on this and just scale those sales up because this is real money. This is not just a computer game, you know? Um, did it feel a little bit like that for you? Um, does it feel like a computer game? Well, a little bit like a game. I, did, did, did you feel like, conf, like when did that confidence come through? Put it that way. When you knew that this will be something that you could replicate or you can, you can scale it, not just this is the only instance where these sales are going to come. It's a good question. I remember I thought like maybe I just got lucky with the first one and then I put more and more. And then I think even then I was like, because I had done Kindle before that and I would have Kindle books that would do well for a while and then they wouldn't. So it's like, I don't know how, but this has been since 2016 now. And it's it was working for years and I was telling people about it and they were like, no, you sounds like you really have something. So I guess a couple of years in, I was like, for sure. Well, no, I knew I, knew I would say when I had less mugs that I was going to make money with them. I didn't know how consistent it was going to be for a long time mm. to come until a couple of years. Yeah, because I think some people, when they start with the this kind of a model and not not necessarily the same as yours as we're going to allude to but when they start if they don't get that early sale they they give up quite quickly and so in a way you're fortunate that you did get that early sale but i bet that you've like having seen some of your material before you've had students that maybe their first sale isn't the very first thing they put up but because right. you teach people how to rapidly put up a lot of products and it's not costing them anything extra to put up more of them. They do have that early success because um, I guess in some ways, as long as they, they are following a system to pick what might work out quite well, um, 
the the law of averages are i guess if you throw up a lot of products you you're going to uh you're going to make sales absolutely yeah exactly and i even kind of say like just expect to fail 98% of the time because if you go in with that then if you don't hit a winner in the first couple that's cool right but eventually it's like a numbers game and when you have the system the numbers get in your favor more yeah yeah i've seen that in many many industries like even in affiliate marketing sometimes with someone's ad campaigns we say like expect expect nine out of ten to fail but the one that succeeds is gonna more than pay for the other nine that didn't succeed because you just keep running ads through that that one that succeeded but in all reality as people get better at this stuff it's actually not 98 out of 100 that fail it's actually it's a lot lot less than that it's just just that um it's not a bad thing to say because of the fact that if if the worst came to the worst and that's what it was then those two out of each hundred are more than paying for the other 98 you know the, the the time that it took to put those up there which might be I don't know, you might be putting up 10 a day, depending on how much time people have. Um, and you you like using automation and tools like you, you I mean, you use tools that automatically put, um, let's say you want to list a product, it puts it on Amazon, it puts it on eBay, and it puts it on Etsy all in one bang. So you're not spending hours and hours of time putting it in one place, then on another place, then another place. Um how important has it been for you to automate as many processes as you can so that you can get more products online faster? I mean, it's, it's really big. I, I don't know that I could, I definitely don't think I could have grown to what it is now without having automated and, you know, systemized things, being able to just make super simple designs, pressing the upload button, and then having things kind of like, so after a customer would purchase the mug, have it sent to fulfillment center, have it made all the things or whatever product just makes it way easier because I don't actually spend that much time on this business. Like I love it, but I, I do so many other things. So I need it systemization for sure. Mm. So you're saying though, it doesn't just, there are tools that don't just um, list it on all these places. The, the you use your, your software will also, um, how do I say it? It will also ensure the product gets to the customer. So let's say I was to list a, um, let's say I was to list a glass mug that had engraved in it, say, I don't know, my local city name, like, because I'm a fan of that city or something. I'm just making something up here. Um, or let's say it was dogs and I'm a fan, I'm, you know, dog lover. And it had a picture of a dog engraved in there. You're saying that, um, it's automated the entire fulfillment and creation. So if somebody orders that mug, let's say they order it for $15 and let's say the drop, the place that prints it, prints it for 10 and ships it, uh, it automates all of that. And I just receive my part and all of those yeah. other parts involved are paid for. So you don't have to worry about it. Exactly. Whatever. So it depends on the company you're working with. So if they have a glass mug in this instance, then yeah, it's it's awesome. So you just put your design on top of it. And then after your customer orders, everything in the background is just handled. The customer gets a tracking number and it's just keep it moving. Yeah, it's it's, it's amazing. And, and what are your thoughts? Like you've been developing tools and so forth that make things so much faster and easier. What are your thoughts about artificial intelligence and how that's helped Um I guess, either speed things up and or increase the quality. Oh my gosh, it's outrageous. <laughs> some of these designs that AI has been coming up with, some of these sayings, they're so good. They use pot, like just phenomenal, phenomenal work. And then it's making things just so easy, less complicated. You're able to get more designs out faster. It's been really cool. I've been astonished at just how much easier it can make. But the cool thing is with AI, like people still want the physical items. So you can still sell mugs and things like this. You just have more designs that you can sell. Yeah, absolutely. It helps that creativity, doesn't it? And it's not just the design, but even from the words point of view, it comes up with sayings that you may not have thought of and, it, and it's already got in its database all of the top selling mugs and so forth from you know from since forever like if there was you've got an idea for something to do with dogs and coffee it'll already know what all the best selling ones have been but it'll and it'll show you what those are so you won't use those designs but then it'll give you suggestions for completely unique phrases and so forth which i think is a big time saver for a lot of people if they want to get into sort of a niche that's it's not copyright dogs and coffee and all that they're not 
copyright, but they are well loved by people, you know. Um, and there are a lot of lot of instances out there um, where there are things like that. I guess just like you did with your pit bull and stuff, you know. Sometimes a local sports team they may have their own their own branded thing that you can't do, but everyone knows say that the pit bull or something is the is their is associated with that team, and you could still do stuff to do with pit bulls. So that that side of it's not copyright. Um, has copyright stuff been an issue um, out of out, out of interest? So I usually tell people, like, if you're operating it out of integrity, it's not going to be a big deal. Now, there may be times when accidentally I have probably 10, 20,000, no, more than 20,000 items now because they're so quick to create, especially when you talk about AI and stuff like this. And yeah. maybe a handful of times I've gotten like, a, hey, someone else has this saying and they take it down. Now, as long as someone's not going out of their way to copy other people, it's mm. not an issue, I would say. Yeah, and there are tools too that people can use to to check to double check all the stuff. That's yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, that that's pretty amazing. Um, okay, so um, out of interest, what do you think is better? Do you find it better to go after um, I guess the more expensive clients, like list products that are um sell for a bit more. Um, or do you, do you think it's better to, I guess, go for go for a lower price um, when it comes to uh, what your focus is on on putting all these products out there? Yeah. So if someone's competing for like the general phrases that are low priced, they're never going to win. Like because some of these people are getting huge amounts of mugs from China or something, they're not it's just not going to work. So generally what I find works the best is when you go into these niche markets. So like I said, pit bulls, right? So if you have a mug for pit bulls or pit bull moms, pit bull dads, um, then you can charge a lot more. You have a lot more. And I was just like my sister, for example, she loves penguins, right? So yeah. I was in her, she had a surgery a couple of weeks ago. I was in her room and while I was there, I was like, I'm going to count how many penguins are in this room. She had 27 different penguin products. Wow. So when you have these people that are interested in these niches, yeah. they'll buy everything. They're happy to pay a little more. So that's kind of how I go about it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm i not surprised, I guess. I, I thought I would double check on that though. But um, because when you think about it, when you're really into something and there's only so much space in your house for stuff, you want that thing to be really really cool like you don't want the cheap thing you want the, the cool thing or if you want to buy a present for somebody you want it to be you want it to be a nice present you don't want to like spend 10 bucks on the present and have it be the cheapest thing you might you, if, if you're really thinking about something you probably want the 40 dollar thing anyway um i know that a lot of cheap items sell i'm not saying they don't i'm just saying that um especially when you get more niched uh those people that are really into that niche and there's not that much options out there they'll, they'll often go for the best thing the thing they fall in love with when they go to buy it and that might have a higher margin for you anyway um and, and isn't it better to make like four sales to make your money than than have to make 40 sales at a real real low price to make the same amount i think so <laughs> yeah i mean i'm just thinking i'm just seeing behind me this i'm going to grab it down actually yep Um, I got given this um, as a present example. Okay, um, I'm into cricket. Okay, I'm into <laughs> cricket. This is, I mean, I'm not in. I mean, I'm not into whatever this. Uh, I don't even know what creature this is, <laughs> but um, <laughs> whatever this type of creature is, I'm a marsupial or something. I'm not. But it's done so well. I mean, you know, it's such a cool item to have, and someone got it for me as a present, and you know, it's it's pretty awesome. I'm into the, the sport cricket, right? These sort of things, like that's just an example. I mean, it's not exactly a label print on demand, but it's just an example of that quality, you know, quality stuff can sell well. Of course, it, that might be in the too hard basket getting started for somebody to have a, like a custom mold and a print. Um, they might move to that later, but you could prove the concept on a T-shirt. You could prove the concept on a phone cover. You could prove the concept, you know, in all sorts of different ways. Um, what are some of your favorite types of items and i know that there are dozens and dozens and dozens of them might even be hundreds but maybe if you could just rattle off a few this is just get some people's wheels spinning just to sell types of products to sell yeah yeah yeah, types, there's, there's yeah. like 
Yeah, there's even thousands at this point of things, but uh, mugs are my number one seller. Um, ornaments, candles, t-shirts, um, people like jewelry a lot, doormats. I mean, it's just endless baby oh, blankets. Course. Yep, baby yeah. blankets. It's not entirely surprising either have because I've got a two-year-old. So, I mean, she's <laughs> two yet, but I know like those sort of things. That Yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, pillow, it's really yes. cool. Yeah. Hmm? Pillowcases, pillowcases for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, just... and I... Sorry, you talk. Sorry. Oh, no. It was just, yeah. There's just like so many things. And it's, and to your point about your cricket gifts, like people, these make such thoughtful gifts. So someone will go on Amazon or Etsy or eBay or whatever, and they'll do a search like funny cricket gift. And then these kind of things come up and it just makes it so easy. Yeah. And when people think mugs, they think, I guess they think, oh, wait a minute, I'm going to reach over, I'm going to grab one. They probably think this this kind of mug, right, is what a lot of people think. But <laughs> I've, I've seen what you do. There's there's so many other kinds of mugs. This is one type. Um, and if you really want to think about it, like there are sports mugs that are like this big, that are see-through. There are ones made of glass. There are ones made of stainless steel. There are ones made of um, copper. There are... Uh, there are latte ones there are soup mugs that are you know like in a soup shape um there, there are just so many um I'll just quit my skype there because it's making dings but um there are just so many different types of mugs i just want people to just be aware of that because it's it, you you know what you picture as the standard may not be what is making tons of sales so um that that's i guess one of the reasons why people might want to join the workshop so people can start to see a little bit more of uh, the matrix of what um, Rachel Raffae does. Um, can you please give people um, some good reasons why they might want to join you for the workshop coming up? Yeah. So speaking of like seeing what is working, I give some examples in the workshop of exactly what's selling, exactly how many they sold. So people get like real world examples of what's working. Um, we go over just like the whole system on how to pretty easily, I would say, uh, make find really great phrases, how to get them on products, sell them on sites like Amazon, Etsy, and eBay. Because the thing is, like with those sites, Amazon, Etsy, eBay, they've invested all this money to bring in customers. And so we get to just get in front of their customers. So you see the exact system, how to get on the front like page when people do searches and things. So yeah, lots of things. That's awesome. And, and what would say be um like one of your one of your best months say um like out of interest so people know oh what's possible with this sort of stuff like what would be one of your best months of sales biggest months um i think so it's it's pretty much been at least five figures every month i would say most months if not all um since 2016 i've been making at least five figures and then every christmas uh, i had i think a hundred fifty four thousand dollar month one year I don't remember how much I did this year. I'm not sure, but it was high. It's usually six figures each month during Christmas and then five figures. Month, figures Christmas. Christmas. That's, that's fantastic. And when you say that, is that sales or is that margin? Is that in um, profits? And if, if it's in sales, what is what is a, a margin that you look for? That's a great point. So yeah, it's total sales. And I actually, inside the workshop, I go over the entire uh, profit breakdowns that people can expect. Oh, so fantastic. the thing is, depending on like the products, you can change different prices and stuff. So it's hard for maybe like 30 to 50%, depending on what the product is, I would say. That but the cool sense. thing is like you list these products and then they're just hands off like assets that are just there, really like mini income streams, right? They're just out there. And then um, you don't really have to do much to them ever again. So that's, that's so awesome isn't, isn't it amazing that you can be selling a whole ton of items and ne never even see most of those items because they they just get printed on demand if someone bought it um, exactly and, and this isn't standard print on demand you've got like i say you've got your own method uh, like the traffic sources uh, where you know you automatically um selling them on they're not even on your own website you're not even i mean i know that you you may or you may have a shopify store i'm not sure but that's not really the majority of what you do and your your whole focus is um all your students they're selling off other people's stores they're not even selling on their own stores so they're just automatically listing on someone else's store letting them do a lot of the heavy lifting 
the whole thing is, like I said, Amazon Nets AB, like these places have spent so much money bringing in new customers. So why should we reinvent the wheel and try to learn traffic strategies and all this? Just go where the money is. Like go, literally, they're buyer search engines, right? Someone's typing in, I want to buy a funny knitting mug. We give it to them and we're on the way. <laughs> yeah. We don't need to convince anyone anything. I just want to keep it as simple as possible. Yeah, no, that that's awesome. And what about trending stuff? Do you like... Do your students or do you kind of look at say, oh, that's a new trend that's just popped up. Let's let's make a bunch of stuff because people will likely be searching for that stuff soon. Or is there's more the focus on evergreen? Like let's think of stuff that's always gonna be pretty cool. Like like I said, like dogs and coffee or something like just stuff that's you you you've, it's been there for years. Um, it may not be well served. It might be underserved, but um, you know that it's it's not just. Um, around for a short time? Yeah, I would say both. I generally don't put as much time into this business, even though I love it. I do a lot of evergreen. However, when I've put time into trending things, I've seen some incredible results. I've seen students have incredible results. Even there was some special like solar eclipse a couple of years ago. I remember so many sales from that during the political, like the elections and stuff. Can you imagine (laughs) people just tons and tons of sales so um you could really do both it just depends like evergreen will sell for like holidays and birthdays and just because but trending i remember when we first started um teaching the system to people someone made i think ten thousand sales in two days off a um a phrase that a politician said on tv wow (laughs) yeah yeah so it's awesome that you can just jump on that so fast especially with a good exactly They already know what they're doing. They've already listed products. They, they they could just jump on it and hear it and bam, it's out there and turn it into something. Um, yeah. And, and, and I guess that's that's another type of niche, you know, like movements um, or a catchphrase that just suddenly took off. Or, I mean, that's not trademarked because it just took off. I mean, I think that's, that, that's pretty awesome. And people are going to get lots of ideas by turning up to the workshop. Um, they're going to see how the system works, where the traffic comes from, um you can see demonstrations of some pretty amazing tools and more um have you got anything else like what what's one more tip that you would give anyone that was considering joining uh, not just joining this workshop but that was just considering this whole model in the first place um well i would say like to not overcomplicate it a lot of times people see the system and they don't think that it can actually be that easy and that's like the biggest downfall <laughs> that people have is they think it's got to be harder and then they just they like it really you really do want to keep things simple so when i say simple designs simple products like just keep it easy that's where the that's where the sales get made yeah yeah no ab- absolutely and um, while while my particular models of of things, um, and I, and I do make sales of um of of items on, um, on eBay and so forth, but most of my stuff is obviously, as you know, I've been dealing in affiliate marketing and stuff. But the same principle applies. I mean, some things that I've set up and put out there on websites, I get still get checks, not checks, but I get, um, I get payments for even today things that sometimes you, you forget that you even put it out there. And I think your model is kind of similar. Like you could list something and it might be something that kind of fails. It doesn't do well. And it only makes one sale a year, but that one sale is still paying you. And if you have a hundred products making you one sale a year, that's another hundred sales. And then if you've got obviously a bunch that's doing maybe two sales a day and you know, the, those ones add up too. It's just, it's, it's really hard to turn the sales off when you, um, when you it's kind of like throwing darts at a darts board even if you're not very skilled a certain number of those darts are going to hit that dart board and going to score you points and it's it's kind of like that here and some will hit a bullseye exactly yeah um and just sorry one last thing i just want to know how did it change your life your family's life and what did people think of it when you started doing well with this stuff Oh my gosh. Well, I said in the beginning how I was just saying back when I started this, I'm a mechanical drone. I'm a mechanical drone. I was hating what I was doing. And now I just feel so, I have so much freedom in my life, which is amazing. I'm able to pay for my nephew's private school. He's actually here right now. If you're, oh. <laughs> um, And like, yeah, like just travel and 
be able to give my family like surprise checks, like go spend this. You, the only rule is you have to blow it, you know, or like just give to charities. And there's all kinds of things. It's just been, it's just freedom. I would say is the bottom line, freedom to make decisions, do what I want. Uh, no, that's awesome. And and I have been talking to some of your students as well. who have had phenomenal success and people will get to hear from them also um, when I release other videos about this as well. Um, but guys, if you are interested in this model at all, if you have any inkling that you would like the idea of selling physical products using automated tools, not even on your own website, um, and being able to do what Rachel does, being able to have all uh, just hundreds of mini income streams, dozens, hundreds, maybe even thousands like Rachel does of mini income streams coming in for you, then join us for the workshop and see whether or not this is for you. Um, thanks so much for your time, Rachel. You've been absolutely amazing and inspiring and I loved hearing from you. So thanks very much. Oh, thank you. And for everyone else out there watching, take action with what you learn and hope to see you on the workshop. All right. Bye for now, everybody.